Terrence Evans. Terrence Evans, I don't re need to really um, speak too much about Terrence. I meant his body. <laughs> he speaks for he speaks for himself. Um, Terrence is the vice chair of the California Lawyers Association. Also, he is the Region 9 director of the National Bar Association, as well as um, partner at Dwayne Morris. Terrence calls me, he <laughs> calls a lot of people and asks for us to um, speak on various DEI panels um, throughout the year. And of course, um, Terrence, has a plethora, just he's so knowledgeable of black, about black history and um, our ancestors and what we need to do as black lawyers to continue to, to fight so many barriers that still exist today. And I just want to um, thank Terrence for um, thinking of me, he calls me up and says, Sinead, can you speak on the panel? And I'm like, uh. <laughs> Yes, I, I will speak on the panel because he, he's, a deal, he's a dear friend and I know I can always count on him. So I would like to introduce Terrence Evans, um, partner Dwayne Morris, and uh, Mr. Evans will introduce Joseph West as our David Cunningham Corporate Community um, Awardee. Well, good evening, everybody. It's, uh, it's good to be here. I feel like I've already preached one sermon. I, I don't know if I, if I should preach another sermon, but I, I wanna begin by first thanking President Sinead Buffington and the cable board and all of the founders of cable who paved the way. Uh, I also wanna call attention to the fact that we are living in a critical moment in American history. Right now, as we live, there are 28 states that have banned diversity, equity, and inclusion training. Right now, there are 28 states that are deliberately miseducating our children about black history as it actually happened. Right now, as we live, there are book bans that are banning books that were written by the most accomplished African-American authors in American history. There's an effort to erase us there's an effort to erase everything that we have accomplished, but it is on us, the people in this room, to fight back. It is on us to preserve our history. It is on us to make sure that our people and everything that everybody in this room has achieved does not disappear. The work that we have done cannot be in vain. So as we stand here and we celebrate the achievements of everybody, we have to think about our future. What kind of history will there be in the future? What kind of African-American authorship will people be able to read in the future? What kind of training will the people have in the future? Will they learn about the accomplishments of Benjamin Ayers. Will they learn about the accomplishments of the founders of Cable and the founders of Charles Houston Bar Association and the founders of Langston and the founders of Black Woman Lawyers? Will they learn about the blood, sweat, and tears of our people that made all of this possible? Or will they forget it because we allowed them to erase who we are? So I want to encourage everybody here to stand up and to fight for justice, to stand up and fight for our history, to stand up and fight for who we are as a people, because we cannot be erased. And it's gonna be all of us, hey! It's gonna be all of us that's gonna to have to fight to keep that going. But I wanna say that I wouldn't be able to do the work that I do if there wasn't support from the law firm that I work at. There is a voice at that firm that has been crying in the wilderness. There is somebody there who has paved the way not only for me, but for countless African-American lawyers at law firms and in-house all across the United States. And that's none other than Joe West. Joe West, during his time at Walmart, he helped to make more black folks partners by sending them work and giving them opportunities to bring in business to their firm than any other in-house counsel in America. He created a, a program that has been duplicated at corporate departments across the country so that we would have the opportunity to shine. When he came over to our firm after being CEO of the Minority Corporate Council Association, he created 
a diversity and inclusion consulting practice. So not only do we internally focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion, we go out in the community and we train folks on how to achieve their goals as it relates to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And when the affirmative action cases were decided, and you had companies that started rolling back their programs. He stood up and said, I'll be damned if we roll back our program. If they're gonna sue us, sue us, and we're gonna fight them all the way to the Supreme Court, we are not gonna back down. And that is the leadership of Joe West that has made that possible. It is Joe West that has made it possible for us to financially provide so much support to the National Bar Associations and cable and all of the affiliates. I've never seen anybody at any firm so committed, not only with words, but also with finances and deeds. And it's Joe West that has opened those doors and made that possible. I wouldn't be here if I didn't have the support of the firm. I wouldn't be here if I didn't have the support of Joe West, our Chief Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Officer and Partner. And without further ado, I wanna to bring together my mentor, my brother in the fight, my brother in the struggle, none other than Joseph K. West. Brother, I appreciate that. I'm a partner in the DC office, but I'm originally from New Orleans. And Frederick, I'm gonna come back here next year and bring Wheezy. I'm gonna bring Master P. We're gonna roll deep with New Orleans in here, okay? First of all, Terrence Evans, you said something that I must respectfully disagree with. You said that there is nobody who is as committed to the issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion as am I. And I would say to you, with all due respect, brother, you are, and you are an absolute gift to the world. So thank you for all you do. President Buffington and all of the members, supporters and friends of this great organization, I am always so honored to be in your presence. And I tell you, every year I come to this event, I am struck by something that someone says that causes me to completely disregard what I wanted to say and move in that direction. Frederica, you said something that really struck me. You said the real abuse of power is to not use that power to benefit someone else. And that is so absolutely true. Terrence talked about my time at Walmart when I was in charge of the Global Outside Council Management Function. I was part of an effort to shift $60 million worth of business every year to women and minority owned law firms and women and minority partners at major law firms. And you know what? An interesting thing happened when we did that. The quality of the work that we got from our outside lawyers went through the roof. The metrics whereby Walmart's internal business clients evaluate the legal department went through the roof. And I tell you another thing, when I came to Dwayne Morris in 2016, we were at 565 lawyers our percentage of diverse lawyers was 8%. This year, we're at 920 lawyers and our percentage of diverse lawyers is 23%. And guess what? Throughout that time period, we've had record profits and zero debt. I say that not to brag, but to say that the concepts of diversity, equity, and inclusion that everyone's trying to attack and excellence are not mutually exclusive. In fact, they are interdependent. They rely on each other. You heard Terrence talk about the enemies of progress. You know what they remind me of? They remind me of that Charlie Brown character, Pigpen, right? They're enveloped in this commingled cloud of ignorance and fear. And every move they make they're doing dirt. And so what I would say to you is embrace the legacy that we have, but utilize that influence for the benefit of our future. I'm gonna ask everyone in this room who's either a student or within the last three to five years graduated from law school to stand.
This is our future. Look around this room, young people. Make contact with these great legal minds in this room. Make sure that you learn something from them, that you connect with them in whatever way your young people connect right now. I met a sister outside who was just finished from law school. She said, you're on LinkedIn? I said, yes, I am. Okay, that's how they do it these days. I still carry business cards though, just so you know, because my cards are in braille and I want people to see and feel that level of inclusiveness that I have, right? And so I will leave you with this one thought. You can be seated. You fight ignorance with information and data. When you have a chance, and you can do it now, this is counterintuitive, nobody should ever ask anybody to Google anything when they're speaking publicly. But in September of 2020, Citigroup released a study called The Cost of Racism. When you get a chance, just put in Citigroup, The Cost of Racism. What that study showed is that in the first 20 years of this century, in just four areas, the US lost 16 trillion in GDP because of discrimination and systemic bias against black people in just four areas, wage and income disparities, lack of access to educational opportunities, housing and redlining, and disparities in entrepreneurial lending. Just those four areas, the US lost 16 trillion in GDP. The year the study was released, the entire GDP for the whole country was 19 trillion. We lost almost a whole year of GDP because of bias against black people in just those, just those four areas. Now, if those barriers had been mitigated, would black people have benefited? Of course. You know who else would have benefited? Everybody, as we used to say in the deep south, everybody. And that proves the point that identifying, attacking, and eliminating barriers to inclusion inures to the benefit of the whole. And that is the lesson that all of us must share. And that is the lesson that keeps us from making sure that Pigpen doesn't do us dirt. <laughs> and so I say to you, I'm humbled to be here. I'm honored to be in your presence. I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. On behalf of our firm, Dwayne Morris, I say thank you, thank you, thank you.